ever feel that way in my life about anybody. So I was like, no, like, I'm like, I need you. There's at one point, you're allowed to grieve him to in a certain extent. He was a star. <laughs> I love you. He was a star. He was a star. I'm trying to relate to bro on, on a lower level. I'm trying to relate to bro on a, on a wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I wish I could just. We can just stare at each other all day. Talking about being rap, yeah, and I been there, and, and you just been listening to me. You just been singing my. What are you talking about? Rappers are known for the love of women. However, sometimes they love them a little too much, and those same women end up being their downfall. I'm Rashad Vashir, and this is the disturbing woman of rap. In 2021, a woman who no one had heard of before began going viral on the internet. Her name was Krishan Rock, and she was unhinged and filled with surprises. It began months earlier in 2020, when Krishan met Blueface for the first time. Within the same day they met, Krishan had already began arguing with other women. The entire time, Blueface was egging them on. At some point, it got so bad that Blueface joked to a security guard to get gloves. I'm gonna get him some boxing gloves. Let me get some boxing gloves. But it didn't take long for things to take a real turn for the worse. If you're familiar with Krishan or have seen her recently, you may notice she's missing one of her front teeth. Well, soon after meeting Blueface, Krishan would get into an altercation that would result in her losing her front tooth. One day, one of Blueface's ex-girlfriends, who also happened to be his baby mama, Jaden Alexis, provoked Krishan. From there, the two of them started arguing and it got physical. And in a horrible turn of events, Krishan lost her front tooth. Later, Blueface would give Krishan Rock the money to fix her tooth, but she never fixed it permanently, and instead she incorporated it as part of her brand. But that wasn't the only altercation Krishan would get into with multiple women, in the beginning of her confusing relationship with Blueface. In May of 2021, Krishan would get into another scuffle with Blueface's artist Slick Woods. Krishan was on Instagram Live and spotted Slick at a party. However, Slick wasn't feeling her at all because she smacked Krishan's phone right out of her hand. And from there, things got crazy. By then, Krishan was no longer the new girl that everyone thought was funny or even interesting. She was straight up a nuisance. So much so that when November of 2021 rolled around, she was dropped from Blueface's show and label. Or at least, they tried to. When Krishan was told to leave, she refused. And this caused a very public argument with her and Blueface's manager. She shouted and said, to which Blueface's manager replied, you work what? What do you do? She then replied, I'm an artist, man. You work where? What are you talking about? You I work where? You pay a bill? I work for you. And Blueface's manager ended it with, If we don't want to do business with you, we don't want to do business with you. We're not going to do any business. He's not going to. So so you so listen, you're, you're dropping. You're yeah. free to go do whatever All you right. want to do. All right. I promise you, All we right. will never talk to you again. Studio, text. At this point, the show Krishan had been scouted for was over, and Krishan needed to leave the house with the rest of the girls. But you see, she didn't want to leave. She was so desperate that she even tried to prove to the police officer that was called on her that she lived there. This is where, this is where I stay, bro. Where's your stuff? They cleaned it out. What are you talking about? They cleaned it out. This is my wings, bro. They cleaned my out. You want me to go show you clothes and washer? Like, you probably didn't clean the washer out. You have a drawer? When you live yes. in a place, you have a drawer. I have everything, bro. Your makeup, I, okay, right now, I'm set up right now, bro. I don't know what, what I look I crazy. What I don't care. Means, I'm saying, up. like, it, it looks like I don't live here and I do. Like. They weren't really believing her. The officer then asked her when was the last time she slept there. Rashawn said last night, but. When was the last time you were here? When was the last time you slept here? Last night. You know, they weren't really believing her but they weren't buying it. Later, Blueface's manager tried to explain to her that Blueface was just robbing her, and it was best that she left. It's like he's taking all your independent money. Scam. Scam. Taking all your shine. You rocking with him all the way, 100%, because you probably believe whatever he's telling you behind closed doors. That's, that's, he's selling you dreams for something. I don't even want to ever meet him now. I don't want to meet him unless we doing something. However, despite this warning, she hung around and wasn't removed from Blueface's life. Fast forward to 2022 and it was starting to look like Blueface's manager was correct and Krishan should have left. Because in February of that year, news outlets reported that Krishan had been arrested on Valentine's Day in Oklahoma. She was allegedly caught possessing drugs after stealing Blueface's car. Blueface was pissed and in a lengthy series of Instagram posts, he began to expose her. He started by showing that Krishan had written a love letter to him on the car window, 
writing, I love blue, and signing it, Rock, before she took off. He then explained that Krishan was a fool thinking she would get away with what she did, writing, stole my car and thought she was going to drive to Baltimore 25 hours away. Dumbass. Blueface wrote in an Instagram story and explained that he had no respect for her. A thief is the worst thing you can be as a female. I'd have more respect for a, I can't say that word. And then explained that he was not going to be bailing her out. Talking about some, come bail me out, laughing emoji. Finally, he showed the text messages in which he explained to her he couldn't help her with the legal situation. I can't stop the cops rock. I had to report it stolen. She replied, no, you didn't. You chose that. You can say you got your car back. Blueface sternly told her, I have responsibilities, Rock. I have car insurance for this reason. I didn't know it was you till I seen the on the wall. At that point, they took your DNA. But Blueface was a hypocrite, a huge hypocrite, because he didn't stop associating with her. And once again, kept her around. Keep in mind, this whole time, they were quote unquote dating. A couple months later, in May of 2022, in a surprise to absolutely nobody, Krishan got into another altercation. That month, Krishan gave Blueface's mother and sister the beats. What's even crazier is this happened right after she got Blueface tatted on her neck and began calling him family. After the situation, Blue's mother took to social media to post a picture of her face and said, All I know is my son will never bring that person around my family ever again in my life, and that's all that matters. Carry on. After seeing this, Krishan was enraged. She took to Instagram as well to defend herself. In her words, she had to do what she did because she was provoked, writing, Why talk shit knowing you threw glass jars at my face and called my mom a dope fiend and got in my face like I won't put you down. Nobody happy to put their hands on somebody's mom, but I'm not a bitch, so be careful. At this time, it turned out that Krishan was in the right because Blueface's manager, who hates Krishan, admitted, everyone knows I'm not a Krishan fan, but this is right. That woman is grown like both of you. You can't provoke someone and not expect them to not respond. At this point, Blueface and Krishan were constantly popping up on social media for all the wrong reasons. In June, Krishan was set to cast in two reality TV shows, Baddies and Blueface's and Krishan's crazy in love. They had a number of public struggles, but of course, Blueface stayed with her once again. And by stay, I mean used. At this point, Blueface realized that associating with Krishan and her antics gave him a lot of eyeballs that could be converted into a tremendous amount of cash. One of these antics was the drama surrounding Krishan's removed tooth. Remember how I said Krishan lost her tooth due to an argument with Blueface's baby mama, Jaden? Well, Krishan finally did get it fixed. However, when she did, he would shame her for it. On Instagram, he wrote, ever since she got that tooth, she's been one. I see what's going on. Bitches get a tooth and it's like all that. What does that even mean? I feel like, like doesn't everyone have a tooth? But Krishan, who was head over heels for Blueface, wrote, boy, I can remove that tooth for you. She kept her word and later uploaded a video of her removing her implant and wrote, took it out for you, daddy. I felt really uncomfortable reading that. All I had to do was unscrew it. Blueface loved this loyalty and wrote, bring that tooth home, baby, like she was a kid. He then ended up mocking her and making fun of her. That's my girl Rock Rock. Go ahead and bring me that tooth, baby. Bring that tooth home, baby. We're gonna put it under the pillow. We're gonna make them 150,000. But at this point, things were still somewhat fun and they weren't that serious. But pretty soon, that would all change. The next month in August, their relationship hit rock bottom after they had a fight in public. That month, a video surfaced of them in a huge argument on the streets of Hollywood. I can't show the video, but it was not pretty. They were both struggling and just embarrassing themselves. A bystander asked, are you all right, dude? They ignored him and just kept at it. Blueface took to his Instagram story to show the aftermath of the couple's fight. In the clip, he showed Krishan lying in bed and called her the heavyweight champ of the world. He explained that Krishan was fine, that he asked what it would take for them to end the relationship. At this point, people were actually worried for Blueface, who they thought Krishan had been forcing to stay with her. What will it take? for us to end this nice and pleasant. He explained he was so done with her that he was willing to offer $100,000 just to leave him for good. What you need to leave me the clone. Yeah, 100000 He then accused her of cheating, which makes no sense to me, writing, it's different when you think that somebody's not horrible. That's like somebody playing like the toughest, most gangster dude in the world and you find out they're really a bitch on the inside. It's more disappointing when you already know they're a bitch or if you know how they're tough. To him, he had to make this clear because everyone on the internet thought she was the victim. To him. However, just a week later, he revealed he was sleeping with his baby mama, Jane Alexis, once again throughout that entire time. Regardless. Are you f***ing her or what? Let me know. Yeah, that's my baby mama. What do you mean? My Who, if you remember, was the reason Krishan lost a tooth her front tooth. Surprisingly, things calmed down for a bit after that. 
However, not even a month from there, they got into yet another public altercation. At the end of the month, Blueface claimed on social media that Krishan Rock was taken into custody by law enforcement following an incident that happened between them in Arizona. On his Instagram profile, Blueface walked through what happened. Free Rock Rock, uh. <laughs> Free Rock! I let it hear me and my shit. We ain't, we ain't gonna ever make the same mistake twice, so you feel me? She hit me this time, all right? Hey. In another clip, he said he was innocent. Yeah, I'm like, I ain't even do nothing. But he kept saying free rock, explaining that the security guard and police took her from him. So he couldn't do anything. Security took her, the police took her. Okay, what can I do? Right now. Chris. Hit me with a banger on Chris. Like, I'm here, I'm here. She was eventually taken out of custody. So Blueface was constantly taking every shot he could to make Krishan look mad. Meanwhile, Krishan was still madly in love with Blueface and had nothing but good things to say about him. That same month, in an interview, she opened up and explained how many tattoos of Blueface she had. I got five. One on my face, one on my neck that say John Jamal Porter, one on my pussy that say Jonathan's pussy, one on my hand that say Jonathan. So you don't regret any of these, right? No. Yeah, five is crazy. However, Blueface did not seem to care about her at all. After the whole situation in Arizona, Krishan tweeted that she intended to stick by Blueface's side no matter what. The issue? Well, the same day Krishan tweeted that was the same day we learned Blueface was about to have another kid with his original baby mama. This really broke her heart because it wasn't even close to the first time Blueface had done this. Hey, how many females do you think you knocked down in the last six months? Let's play higher or lower. Five. Uh, hell no. Higher? Probably like. Shit. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, we gonna get. What? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> what you say? A thousand. No, I'm a fucker. He also tweeted that going two weeks without cheating was a new record for him and his inability to remain loyal in a relationship. Tweeting, I'm faithful, but I still cheat. Krishan just had to accept it. Nevertheless, he was mad and went on a drunken tweet storm. However, Blueface calmed her down by finally asking her to become his official girlfriend, not just rumored. And I guess because after two years together, they were now finally officially a couple, Blueface decided to meet her family. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned because Blueface would almost immediately get into it with Krishan's father and gave him the beats. After it hit the news, Blueface took to Instagram and wrote, I'm her daddy now. Wow, what, a, what an alpha, I mean, Sigma male. Meanwhile, Krishan was disappointed, writing, so my boyfriend knocked my dad out, family stuff didn't go well, I don't even know what's going on, and everyone felt bad for her. But it looked like Blueface wasn't lying when he said he was her new dad, because afterwards, Krishan began to defend him, writing, What hurts the most, I don't have nothing to do this shit for, I was doing it for my family. She later explicitly wrote, so I can't show, that her father has been a horrible person, and what Blueface did to him should have been done a long time ago. So at least he was protecting her, like a man should. But at this point, the relationship was actually the craziest it had ever been. In October, they were set to appear in their new reality TV show called Crazy in Love, which was supposed to be exclusively about their on and off relationship. However, the show was quickly put into jeopardy when the very next month, Blueface was arrested on an attempted murder charge. On Tuesday, that week, news of Blueface's arrest made the rounds as footage of his encounter with police went viral. Blueface was cuffed and booked after being sworn by undercover police officers who were reportedly conducting a sting operation. God damn, what did he do? I mean, you know what he did. Actually, I mean, you heard the charge. In the clip, Krishan could be seen screaming at the cops while helplessly standing on the sidelines. Blueface was charged with attempted M-word with the use of a deadly weapon and discharging a firearm into an occupied structure. These allegations came from the month before in which the incident took place in Las Vegas. Krishan immediately went into frenzy about her now official man. In an Instagram post, she wrote, this was three hours before they took you from me. Jesus got us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. I'm your rock forever. Keep in mind, every time she was arrested or got embarrassed, Blueface would clown on her and make her look horrible. Due to this, most fans suggested that this was the perfect time for her to cut ties with Blueface. She said that was not happening. Stop playing with me. Everybody that keeps saying it's a sign to leave. What the f*** is you talking about, bro? Nigga, stop playing. It's never left me when I went in. Nigga, what? I'm going to court tomorrow and that's all that matters. She also seemed very confident that Blueface was going to come home and not serve a sentence. He coming home. I don't know what y'all talking about. Never tag on my face. What? What's up? I'm riding. I'm sliding. She said defiantly and confirmed her love for Blueface was not going anywhere, even suggesting she might get more face tats in his honor. Luckily for her, her beloved Blueface was released on a $50,000 bond. 
The next month, things kind of went back to normal, I guess. Blueface and Kishan were trying to promote their show, so they went to the popular Twitch streamer Kaisenat's stream. However, it didn't take long for it to quickly go downhill. Man, that's the mic. Yep, that's the mic. Right here. Yep. Pull that bitch out. Get on my chair, man. Watch out. Hey, man, this is my chair. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm making I'm make you a chair. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let the professionals do it. All right, all right, let me get up. 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 Oh, Kashan. God damn, Kashan. Damn. Daddy, what are you? Damn. Oh, my God. In another jarring moment, Kushan throws a chair at Kai Sanat's wall, and this was her response. Yes, I'm work. Yeah, because this is a little. Whoa, my bad, Chad. Wait, you put a hole in my wall. You rich, you can fix it. Towards the end, you could see Kai was trying to be as kind as possible, but Kushan was actually scaring him. This nigga. Okay. Hey, daddy. Right, pumpkin. I'm not your mama game, but I'm your mama's. <laughs> <laughs> Call me mama's, but you just can't Bro, say it. Shut the f up. <laughs> <laughs> there was clearly a lack of respect. But you see, Krishan wasn't always like this. At one point in her life, she was a prime example of someone who had to overcome her rough situation and battered her life. Krishan's childhood was very rough. Throughout her childhood, she lived all over West Baltimore with her 11 siblings. For most of her childhood, her father was in prison. Because of this, her father was never around because he was serving a prison sentence for much of her early life. And when she finally got to meet him, he was, uh, let's put it, not very kind to her. Meanwhile, her mother struggled to hold the household down while battling a drug addiction, and she couldn't hold him down for long. So when Krishan was very young, she became homeless, staying with friends, family members for days before finding a new place to stay. This was her life. Thankfully for her, support from coaches, friends, and her school kept her on the right path. But there was one thing in particular that really kept her going. From an early age, Krishan displayed an incredible athletic ability, which would somewhat be her saving grace. In high school, Krishan was a gifted track and field athlete. Her talents and track would allow her to go through not only high school, but also be awarded a scholarship at Santa Monica College in California, which she joined in 2018. As a college athlete there, she was one of the top track runners in the conference. She clearly had a bright future ahead of her. But it was also during this time that she began building her following on Instagram as well. I guess like so many of our generation, she always wanted to be famous because when she was scouted for a TV show called Ultimate Tag, she dropped out. The youngest in the competition, I've been through more than most. It was a struggle growing up and I was even homeless. And Athletic saved me. It was like an outlet for me to put all my stress, all my pain on the track. I want to win Ultimate Tag and put myself through college and I'm going to win tonight. At first, her career in reality TV was amazing. She not only won the show, which earned her $10,000 that she was able to live off of, but after sending in a new audition tape, she was accepted into a new show, Blueface's reality TV show. And that's where it all began. At first, everything seemed to be going fine. The show featured a select group of women living in Blueface's house for a month and competing for his attention and love through various challenges and drama. Krishan, almost from the jump, not only caught the attention of the viewers, but also Blueface. This was the very first time they met. Your name? At the time, it seemed like Krishan was enjoying her time on the show. Whether or not she should have is up to you as a viewer. For example, in December of 2020, Blueface officially signed Krishan to his label. To celebrate, he got her an iced out necklace. Krishan couldn't believe it and was super happy. This is pretty. Okay. Aww. Ugly. <laughs> <I'm> ugly. <laughs> Don't start doing that shit. <laughs> New kid on the block. It's a splat. Hey, Nino. Let me see, let me see flip it around. That show that Krishan was originally casted for didn't last long. But there was one thing Blueface learned for sure. Krishan was a star. I mean, that's why he signed her. And someone that if associated with could get him a lot of eyeballs. And from there, you know what happened next. But surprisingly, the most psycho era of Krishan Rock was still yet to surface. The next month, December of 2022, Krishan went on a podcast where she spoke about a possible pregnancy and said that if she had a baby, she would be keeping it. If I have a baby, I'm keeping it this time. In that same interview, she also admitted that she had stopped three pregnancies previously. What? I got like three of them. Okay, Krishan, wait. What? I'm ready it. now. Oh, Jesus. You know you always have that bad feeling like, mm, it's not right. It's not the right time. Mm -hmm. She explained that the reasoning was that she didn't know if her relationship was going to be stable and long term, so she didn't feel right going through with the pregnancy. And many people saw where she was coming from. So when she announced that she was pregnant, 
and she was going to be keeping the baby in January of 2023, fans went crazy. That month, she posted an Instagram story writing, guess how many heartbeats, and a picture of not one, not two, but three pregnancy tests, confirming she was pregnant without a question. This must have been a massive shock to Blueface, who immediately was in denial, and took to Twitter to announce that him and Krishan were done since she announced the pregnancy and he's not the dad, and he was not the father. He tweeted, to answer y'all questions, yes, me and Rock are officially done. It's strictly business. I tried it and it clearly wasn't giving before she announces she's pregnant with somebody else's child. It's not mine. In another tweet, he claimed that Krishan had been seeing other men. Rock has had encounters with 10 different men in the last year. Until I see a DNA test, then it's not mine. Which if true, just made their whole relationship even weirder. But wait, maybe Krishan wouldn't keep the baby, right? Nope. She was pretty rigid in her decision making. Oh, my emotions are crazy. Um, they just took my blood pressure and stuff like that. And the only reason I feel like I'm so overwhelmed right now is because I'm deciding to keep it, obviously. So was this it? Was the relationship over? Well, not really. You see, as Blueface said, they had contractual obligations, meaning they'd have a business relationship. Also, it wasn't confirmed Blueface wasn't the father yet. And they had quote unquote broken up a million times by now. Even Krishan admitted that. Okay, so Blue, Mr. Jonathan, um, we broke up. We uh, broke up, whatever, you know, we break up every other weekend, whatever. Long story short, um, I found out I was pregnant today on his birthday. But this time, things were actually looking pretty bad for them. That same month, they did a couple interviews, and it wasn't looking pretty. For starters, they began arguing on the interview multiple times. Just take a look at this argument. I'm not even gonna interrupt it. Wait. One thing about trauma, one thing about shit that mm. play with me, why you, why, why do you I, I want to so forget. Trauma? Why do you have so much trauma? What do you trauma? mean? I don't, I, I, right. I kind of like- that's what I asked earlier. I, I got detoured. Why do you have so much trauma? Are you I'm getting asking it? you why you have so much trauma. The trauma, I'm talking about the situation well, we were talking up. about. You're trying to like change the subject and play with me because I'm drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm lit. You said you're, we don't think I'm you're lit. drunk. I'm lit. We don't I'm think lit. you're drunk. What's we up? got your back. Why are What's you acting up? like we're your enemies here? I'm not. I'm trying to talk to y'all. Y'all not letting me talk. Y'all trying to talk we for are, me. But like, talk to us like up. we fam. I was hella cool. We was and hella cool laughing. 20 minutes hold ago. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait. Express what? yourself. Express Let yourself. me drink? Wow. Rock, do you ever, um, so I don't, I'm not against you. I'm, I'm here I'm with you. I'm listening. <laughs> Nobody here. But I am. Trying, trying to get a jump with you. Krishan was also having constant mood swings and felt like Blueface was being mean to her when he was just trying to not embarrass himself. Stop saying this one right here. She Talk to like, me. Look at me. Like, I'm right. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here. Right here. I'm right here with you. Stop playing with me. We're sharp. I love you. You're just talking to short and you're trying to like isolate me from that conversation. I love you. I'm sorry. You want me to be the bitch you're talking about? Or what you're talking to Shark about? I'll be that How did the interview end? Well, Krishan got into an argument with the interviewer. Can I ask you a question? So it's the life we chose. You're saying you're bad. No, I said that's bad. I'm not that saying mentality. you're bad. You're trying to say, and you're trying to gaslight me. Just let me talk for myself. I don't like nobody setting me up in a conversation. Let me talk for myself. And the interviewer had her removed. You're being weird. Like, like, no, take her outside. Take her outside. Take her outside. As you can see, she was dragged out of security while Blueface didn't even come to her side. I gotta take you. I gotta take you. Oh, no. okay. So it's safe to say their relationship may have actually hit rock bottom at this point. But if things couldn't get any more confusing, at the end of the month, they posted a music video for a song named Dear Rock in which they got married. The music video was shot the same month. However, technically they still weren't together and this created some very confusing drama. So what was going on? Well, because they were no longer together, other men began hitting up Krishan. But not regular other men, A-list rappers. Well, kind of. You see, apparently Lil Baby slid up Krishan's DM. But Blueface, although they were broken up and claimed to not care about Krishan, was very mad. He took to social media to show everyone that Lil Baby apologized. In a text, Lil Baby wrote, It's Baby, why people saying I was in your DM? Why you ain't tell them I'm a big brother? I hate shit like that. Blueface was not having it, airing him out in a tweet. Men by bitch one time talking about big brother. You ain't no son to me, truth could never be a diss. So Blueface was claiming that Lil Baby only met Krishan once and was just trying to be slick. What did Lil Baby think though? Well, he took to Twitter as well to explain he was never on that timing and that Blueface was totally blowing the interaction out of proportion, writing, I ain't with all of this trolling shit. 
I'd be laughing at certain shit, but all right now, stop playing. I never tried to talk to no Krishan. Please stop attaching my name to that. And I just seen her at a party and told her some real shit. She knew I never tried to talk to her. I know I bring attention, but Krishan even trolling about a child and stuff is too far. Blueface later expressed to Krishan in person that she shouldn't be hanging out with other rappers other than him because it was a bad look, even if they weren't together. I think you uh, think you be letting too many rap niggas be in your face. Who that picture? On my Twitter, in your face. It was a little baby, but it wasn't like, huh? it wasn't even like that. Oh, baby. We was talking about you. Yeah. But that wasn't the only rapper Blueface had gone possessive over Krishan with. During the Super Bowl, Krishan linked with Rick Ross for a photo, especially if they weren't still with the person. But Blueface was different. In a tweet, Krishan shared their convo, where she sent him a picture with Rick Ross. In a text, Blueface wrote, Could never be my bitch, but I get it, you new to this for real, so that type of excites you. It's really nothing wrong with it, I'm just a different type with my bitch. That's why I told you a long time ago, you really don't want that spot and basically gaslit her. Krishan tried to explain to him, replying, what, he literally got a pic walking past. I don't know why everyone trying to get a pic with me. I'm not in his face. He literally caught me off guard while I was waiting for my car with zoos in them. You being weird, bro, shut the f up. Like for real, stop talking to me sideways. You involved b that jumped me to your birthday and took pictures and let them shake the ass on you. I'm not sure what the f you trying to act like. Stop talking to me like you dumb as hell for real. Basically just airing him out, but he didn't care. However, a reaction like this only occurs when somebody cares about the other person, right? Well, the next month, Blueface would go straight back to mocking her, tweeting, She's pregnant, missing a tooth with seven tattoos, finna make a fool of herself with the next guy, and I'm not pregnant at all, finna live my life perfectly fine with the next who's gonna take me even more serious now? It's really tragic. Krishan responded in her own tweets, tweeting, I don't feel anything watching you, and don't feel bad for me, I'ma shake this all off for real, plus I'm grown, I did this to myself. Blueface also praised Jaden Alexis, the mother of his two children, for the classy way she presented her last pregnancy. Remember, this is the same window who broke his window, which I think is pretty funny. However, Krishan didn't and actually got pretty sad. In an Instagram live, she contemplated going to the hospital and stopping yet another pregnancy. I should go too with you to get this done. Not real shit. She didn't feel right being pregnant with Blueface's child while he was cheating on her. I don't know what to do. I can't be pregnant by this She thought he was behaving this way just to spite her. No, he's purposely trying to hurt me because what I said on my live when I was like, what I say? I said he c blocking and I said he unfair. So he was realistic. Clearly, she was in her head and needed support. However, rather than help, Blueface decided to egg her on and encourage getting rid of the pregnancy, writing, do it, please. He also tweeted, I'm blocking and pregnant bitch. LMAO, please do it, please, I'll pay for real, 100k cash and the fees. But I guess all Krishan was looking for was attention, because she didn't go through with it. Instead, the next month, she started beefing with a certain female rapper. That rapper was none other than Koi Ray. That same month, it came out that Koi Ray wouldn't do an interview, because they had just done an interview with Blueface and Krishan. I do the show, but like, that's not a good look, you, you big, like, you influential, like, you that like we want to celebrate you you just had a big interview with cardi b and then you interview blueface and krishan like Crazy. so i said well koi i'm in the business of interviewing people so like whether i'm interviewing and blueface and krishan's gonna do numbers because they're hot right yeah. now koi actually used to date blue in 2020 however krishan did not like that look and tweeted you hung out with me to suck on your d and get it featured when this man and you screw over a that isn't even f with politics. Mark my words, God already made me bigger than y'all put together. I hope it was worth it. And then for a female to be in that position makes it clear why I gotta slap your dumb self on sight because I'm not with the politics. But this didn't totally add up right. Well, apparently Koi had just denied an interview. She also tried to allegedly befriend Krishan just to get with Blueface again. I thought she wanted to do a collab with some music, but really she was just trying to out me out the plan and bag me this abortion. And I'm like, you? have you i just want the verse it just we fell out because she wanted what she wanted she had a hidden agenda when she hung out with me Krishan didn't have a great reaction to this at all and when she saw koi it wasn't a pretty sight but when, when i seen her you can ask anybody that was right there i took my phone i get i'll buy a new one i threw that in her face what are you doing she just wants to sit in my face and smile i don't know what it was but i didn't give a f what it was however despite all of this drama Krishan was still pushing through with the pregnancy and in a shocking turn of events even threatened to leave Blueface if he kept disrespecting her. 
tweeting, like I said, we can either make this last, make it better, or just let this go. And I'll try again on my own. Tired of taking disrespect from a guy that's supposed to be motivating me to get more and shine more. But after what happened next, there was no chance she would leave him. Because the next month in June, Krishan took to Instagram Live to announce that the DNA test results had come back and Blueface was the father. So you'd think they'd get closer and make amends, but no, Krishan seemed to have finally gotten over Blueface and began fantasizing over her next man. So the same month that Blueface was confirmed as a father, she tweeted this, The next guy I show y'all finna be that guy. I'm married. I love my space. I love my peace. I love me. I'm not pressed to show if I've moved on. I'm excited to show my growth and my new blessing. Wow, that's beautiful. Happy for you. In fact, she was so over Blueface that she was contemplating whether or not she should get her neck tattoo removed, please get that removed, which is dedicated to her ex, Blueface, writing, I'm trying to convince myself to go through with this laser removal. I made an appointment, I'm just so attached to it, it's crazy. However, fortunately, it turned out this was just a phase, and before long, Gershon returned to her shenanigans. The thing was, this time, she was putting someone else's health in danger. You see, on Blueface and Krishan's reality TV show, the two were having a disagreement while Krishan was smoking like crazy in the kitchen. This is very dangerous behavior and can cause defects. Of course, it didn't matter to Krishan, but also according to her, it was only a one-time thing. However, no matter what happened, she was going to go through with the pregnancy. So how did it turn out? Well, on Sunday, September 2nd of 2023, Krishan Rock gave birth to her child in the most Krishan Rock way possible on Instagram Live with a whopping 300k people watching and named her son Krishan Malone, which was her original name. She was surrounded by nurses and loved ones, but Blueface, the father of the child, was not in the room. In fact, according to reports, by that I mean Instagram stories, he was seen partying in Miami with his other baby mama, Jane and Alexi. But if we're being honest, who really expected Blueface to be a stand-up father anyways? However, Krishan was now a mother, so people expected her to be somewhat responsible, right? Well, once again, she let everyone down. The next month, she was seen in Walmart being extremely irresponsible, and the reaction on the internet was genuine worry. Blueface's response was shocking though. On Twitter, he wrote, As far as the Walmart video, hey man, she's gonna do her and I can't micromanage her, and the baby, y'all said I was doing too much, so I backed off, she's gonna be okay. And trust me, I'm just surprised as y'all. Krishan explained that she just wanted some help, but Blueface would always refuse. I'm calling my baby daddy. Is he helping? No, so I don't know why he's chiming in either. Uh, this mommy shit is cool, but man, your mind is racing 36, 8 hours a day. So clearly things weren't going well with them. And remember how Krishan said she was ready for a new man? Well, in October of 2023, Krishan finally revealed him to the world. And that was dun dun dun, Lil Mabu the fake gangster drill rapper. How? Well, Lil Mabu and Krishan dropped a song together, and in it, it seemed like they were dating. The song's name was Mr. Take Your in which Mabu was dissing Blueface by basically saying the entire song that he stole Krishan from Blueface. But even Krishan was dissing him, rapping, F Blueface, I had to find a new bae. What's worse is that not only did this diss track catch a lot of attention on the internet, it also began getting real plays, currently sitting at 62 million plays on Spotify, which must have stung for Blueface, who at this point's music career was practically over. So it was understandable why he was mad. In fact, he was so mad that he went on No Jumper and claimed that his and Krishan's child was not his. But that wasn't enough. My kid will never be named Krishan Malone Jesus Jr. Well, what if it is your kid? Jesus is crazy. She would have to change, <laughs> bro. <laughs> She's so dumb, she really think J-E-S-U-S -S spells Jesus <laughs> on in 2023 on in today's planet. She don't even know that. That's Jesus. Right. Well, she's not Mexican or anything. She doesn't speak Spanish, right? I don't know who's going to tell her. Damn. On top of disowning his child, he also decided to propose to his first baby mama, Jade and Alexis. However, a normal couple would probably try and make amends, if you could even call them that, and if they would even do that, and move on for the best of their future family. But that would be boring. So Krishan decided that she would get a new man. And surprise, surprise, it wasn't Lil Mabu. During an Instagram live, Krishan started talking about their romance. He's just too good to be true. Like, he's perfect. He's so sweet, y'all. He's so nice to me and respectful as f According to Krishan, things were going so well in her new relationship that she was already looking forward to another pregnancy. It was pretty obvious she was bending the truth to get Blueface jealous because that new man she was talking about was a rapper named K Suave whose nickname is The Thought Slayer. And for your information, he gave that title to himself. But in normal Krishan and Blueface fashion, they got back together. Not really, but kind of because they started interacting again. And instead of being a normal couple, they just started beefing. And at this point, it was getting wild. 
It began when Blueface went to Krishan's house and took a DNA test, where he claimed he wasn't the father, tweeting, Tell me why I snuck and swapped this baby DNA test. Results came in. I am not the father. Shakes my head. It's a bittersweet feeling because I was coming around to it, but definitely in my best interest. Thank you, Jesus. I can't even pretend like I'm not happy as hell. However, what was concerning to fans was he wouldn't let Krishan see the kid. And of course, DNA tests don't come back so fast. So Blueface must have been lying. On the other hand, Krishan, who must have had enough, then went and live streamed her getting the tattoo she had on Blueface on her neck removed. How you feeling about it? Good. You think, you think I can do it? Yeah, for sure. Black Rose. <laughs> you know, a black rose? I don't want a black rose. How about you just put a crust in his face? Which you'd think, after all of this, Blueface wouldn't care about. But instead, he got super salty and accused her of sleeping with Offset while they were together. Being tatted on is not a flex. You literally were with Cardi B's husband a couple weeks ago. I'm tired of men looking at me while they F you. Get the rest of them gone ASAP. Basically, he was like, I'm tired of other men seeing me on your body when they're with you. Please remove them. But it seemed like she lied about Offset. So he was salty. At the end of the day, these were honestly light disses, especially considering the two of them and what they were capable. Krishan knew that because what she exposed next was insane. According to her, she saw homoerotic material in his search history and that's the real reason she left him for good. Here's what she said. Let's talk about how I saw gay p in your recent search history. That's why I honestly got the cover up bro. I had zest on my neck. Nothing wrong with being bisexual. Just let a b know before she fall in love, weirdo. Then, a famous drag queen named Cole Carrion leaked some more info about Blueface. According to him, Blue slid into his DM and asked them to hang out after he posted a set of photos on his Instagram dressed in drag. He then shared some videos with someone who looked very similar to Blueface, which is not cool by the way, that's an invasion of privacy, so I won't be showing it. Oh, well, that time, I posted these pics on Instagram a couple months ago. Check the material. Very much she a baddie, she knows she a 10, she a baddie with her baddie friends. <laughs> Why did this happen after? Hmm. I wasn't gonna go there, but babe, I'm bored. Blueface was rightfully mad and took to Twitter to say this was just outright false and not even worth pursuing legal action over because he knew his truth. I'm not suing nobody for defamation. If y'all believe that, that's on you. It's all entertainment for me. Literally every time I open those apps, I separate my reality from this virtual world where everyone is pretending and lying for likes and approvals. I am the truth. But many fans speculated that the real reason Blueface didn't bring Cole to court was because the receipts would get pulled up and the truth, like he said, would get exposed. So at this point, things were getting really bad. Really, really bad. However, in January of 2024, they did something that surprised everyone. Blueface and Krishan made amends. That month, Krishan took to Instagram to say, moving back in with my baby daddy, revealing that although Blueface was still behind bars, they had managed to reconcile as she and their son had moved back into Blueface's house. But her followers weren't actually happy with this move. They were happy she had freed herself, or seemed to at least, from Blueface. So Krishan clapped back to the fans and shared a video of her new tattoo that she got in honor of him that night. It was a massive face tat on her cheek. Her caption on Instagram, Hashtag free blue face, free my daddy, I love you papa. Okay, that also made me kind of uncomfortable. But I guess at this point, we know this, Krishan just loves drama. So in April of 2024, when Diddy was getting taken down by the media, she decided to chime in. According to Krishan, after having issues with the producer of a show she was a part of, over how much she would be paid, Diddy heard about it and stood up for her at a party, scaring the producer. Your up that day. When we was at the party, he grabbed me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he grabbed let me by his collar. Oh, it was like, good, oh. don't ever play with that girl ever again. Talking about me, like, don't ever play with her. Like, like, <laughs> know you'll play with their budget, play with talent. Like, y'all playing with me, my. Like, I will never forget that motherfucking day, bro. So, I set a price. I said two hundred thousand. You said a hundred. I said one fifty. I'm not going underneath. Unfortunately, it seemed like this wasn't the beautiful interaction that we all thought because sources close to her claimed that Diddy didn't actually care about her and that he was just trying to get on her good side in order to use her. When fans found out, they were very skeptical, writing, It's absolutely unbelievable to me that Diddy would be giving Krishan flowers, so yeah, recruiting sounds more like it. Others were furious, but happy she didn't get used. Those industry mother about to pimp Krishan out harder than Blueface was and people cheering this on. What is Diddy's old self giving her kisses and flowers for? Like she's a legend, they souping her up so she'll be loyal to them like she was to Blue. They see her Stockholm Syndrome. However, Christian had much worse issues. Remember how she was pregnant and how she wasn't really taking great care of her health? Well, 
That probably wasn't a good idea, because now she was parading her son. And people began noticing some pretty frightening things. In fact, it got so bad that in April of 2024, people began asking Krishan and speculating that her son might be blind. She instantly denied the claims. But there were videos that showed that Krishan's son did not respond much to stimuli, making many suspect that he had alcohol fetal syndrome, which honestly is just super sad if true. But this is your word. So these shoes, this baby shoes, I don't want to know if I'm going to fit them or either I'm waiting for so like, because I keep waiting to see if he can wear shoes yet. That same week, Krishan revealed that she was giving up drinking and smoking, which I'm not gonna lie, it's a little too late for that, but I'm proud of you, but good for her. And that to achieve this, she would be training for her first ever game in an amateur football league. But the questions of her son's health issues still remain, so much so that she decided to start responding to them on video on Instagram. This is after fans claimed her son wasn't blinking. She explained that he was just normal. She began by reassuring fans that he didn't have fetal alcohol syndrome, which spawned after unflattering photos surfaced online. She continued and explained that he was actually gifted and that he would prove everyone wrong. And I feel bad for her as a mother and for her son, but at the same time, this is what putting your entire life on social media will do. Unfortunately for Krishan, there was a lot of evidence that she wasn't taking care of her health properly during her pregnancy. For example, an interviewer in No Jumper, in her interview with them, Krishan was drinking heavily. But she was pregnant. Yeah. Why, Which, why, 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 why drink it? While drinking. Like, yeah. She right was there. pounding the whole time? What? Boy, give you a run for your money. <laughs> you think you're doing something? Bender girl, she's a Bender boys? Am I pregnant? Yeah. Bender girl, dang. She gets physical yeah. with that liquor, boy. I mean, from what I know, I don't know what, what she's doing now. I don't want to I hope she's cool on, now. I hope she's, she's doing cool, good man. now, but then, boy, straight out the bottle. But that wasn't the only person who vouched that Krishan was drinking during her pregnancy. In the stream, academics revealed that when he FaceTimed her while she was pregnant, she was doing substances and didn't care. FaceTime her, she's like smoking a while, while full she's on pregnant. While she's pregnant. Full on yeah. pregnant. Smoking yeah. a And I said, aren't you, aren't you? And, and, and she's like, shh. And I'm like, it ain't no shh. I'm like, You're, the baby's in the stomach. Like, yeah. no, no f***s giving you. So Krishan is definitely a character, but there was actually one woman who seemed to be able to outdo her. It's none other than Ali Lottie. Ali Lottie became famous around 2018 to 2019 as the late rapper Juice World's boyfriend after he dedicated every love song he made to her and even sung to her on stage. However, years later, as we all know, Juice World is no longer here. So how and where did one of hip hop's most picturesque love stories go so wrong? Well, to understand Ali Lottie's erratic and batshit behavior today, we have to go back to where it all started and how she met Juice World. Ali and Jared began dating sometime in 2018 after Ali Lottie slid into his DMs. I was not familiar with her game. Ali started that conversation by saying, good music, keep it up kid. And I guess they began talking from there. A few months later, while Juice World was on tour, he decided to hit her up and they ended up meeting for the first time in Rhode Island. For the next four days, they were inseparable and the rest was history. While Juice was alive, their relationship from the outsider's perspective seemed to be beautiful. However, unfortunately in December of 2019, Juice passed. It was a horrible loss for hip hop and at the time, everyone just felt really bad for Ali Lottie. Years later, they felt bad for Juice. But it didn't just happen all of a sudden. For a couple of years, Ali held up pretty good and things were going pretty well. However, by the time 2022 rolled around, those feelings had passed, and Ali began acting insane. What do I mean? Well, in 2022, Ali Lottie exposed Juice World's management for allegedly taking part in his demise. But after looking at what she said, you're going to be very confused. In June of 2022, Ali Lottie explained that Juice World's management had killed Juice World in a leaked video she sent to a fan page, which, by the way, she warned not to leak. Spoiler alert, it was leaked. According to her, she couldn't speak about the situation because she was made to sign an NDA under the influence. I've been quiet for the past year and a half, plus into myself, took myself away from everyone because I knew what was going to happen. If people knew what happened the day before Jared passed and, and the day that Jared passed and everything. Like that, which she couldn't speak on it right then, but when she was in a safe place, which what the hell does that mean? Because she and Juice World's management had not been around each other for a while, you know. I cannot speak upon at this moment, but I will. I will. I just have to make sure that I am safe. She then explained that the fans had her whole support to push the narrative that Juice World was killed, and this is what he would have wanted. So please, one, don't show anyone this, but two, know that you guys have my full support. Because 
I'm, I cannot let Jared's legacy be what it is. Jared would never treat any of his fans like this. She also said that she knew they would do this to him. So she would beg him to stop recording these songs and leave because Juice was now a liability to his management. And two would never, ever let. It's, it's always been about money. And Jared made enough money to not have this issue. I would literally sit on his lap every day and be like, don't go record. Since my mom was they don't need. They don't need us. They don't need you anymore. He made so many songs that were a liability. Being here, they didn't think I was gonna make it through this year. There's been plenty of times. Literally tried. They've tried and tried their hardest to make sure I wasn't gonna be here, and I pushed and kept going because of this reason only. And I will make sure that shit changes. I just have to make sure that I am safe first. So, again, please don't show I am going to break. Well, first, I'm going to take it to court. Of course, many fans believe she was absolutely crazy. However, many also believed her, and there's even some evidence to point towards this. And to this day, this is a large conspiracy in the Juice World community, mostly because of her though. But that wasn't it. Later that year, she went on Instagram Live saying Juice World didn't pass from her over to f. Jared would be dead proud of me. So stuff like literally. Y'all mad get literally, I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. you might say he died from a drug overdose. You're wrong. You're wrong. Literally. But this actually turned out to be true. And this might have been fine because everyone understood she was grieving a loss. But what really sent fans over the edge was the fact that she used this moment to gain clout. In an Instagram live, she said that she was becoming what others wanted her to be. She wanted Lottie, you wanted her to be a sh The way Jared loved me and found me, here I am. She also said that Juice or Jared would be proud of her. Jared would be dead proud of me. So suck my d literally. Yeah, I don't know that nigga. You know me. So that's how you think you know that data. And you don't know shit about me. And began spreading rumors about his passing. Okay, suck it. There's a lot of Y'all don't know that I grieve through myself while I let y'all grieve and talk mad shit on me. I don't care. I was go ahead and be what y'all want me to be. Would you? This enraged fans of Juice and friends of his who were quick to call her out. DJ Scheme, one of Juice World's best friends, apologized to Juice World fans on Twitter, writing, Sorry to the fans, y'all don't deserve this. But you see, Ali and the people around Juice, meaning his friends and team, didn't just have this rift after he passed. It was present far before any of this happened. You see, Juice's friends did not understand why he needed a girlfriend. Ali and Juice's relationship started when Juice's music just started to hit the mainstream. And even then, Juice revealed that his friends did not understand his need for one. Of course, their six year age difference didn't help. He actually spoke about it in an interview, saying, all my homies be like, what you doing with a girlfriend? You got all this stuff going on. I love her though. I can admit and say that I have feelings. But DJ Scheme's response was still cordial, and it seemed like Juice World's friends were just playing around. But the person who really went in on Ali Lati was Juice World's cousin. His name was Mills, and he posted a series of messages accusing Juice's girl, Ali Lati, of course, of some pretty horrible things. He wrote, one of the last things I told Juice while he was alive was to take care of his loved ones, his homies, his family, and watch out for that bitch. He got so mad at me for telling him the truth because I seen everyone's true colors. I left because I couldn't take the unhealthy mess and how we were moving and how she was controlling him. Mills was actually an original member of Juice World's 999 Collective. He explained that he went on to remove himself from that toxic situation, but continued to explain that it wasn't his fault. It was all Ali Lottie's doing. The nerve she had calling us bag boys and maids to me. BZ and Ty was sick. I wake up one day and she's calling a 19 year old dad. Crazy how karma comes back around. She lost her main income in an extraordinary human being that was here to heal millions. Dang, I feel bad for him. But that wasn't it. This man went on and explained Juice World was manipulated like crazy. And you crippled this man by keeping him away from his only peoples that brought him energy and you along with the label manipulated that man until it drove him crazy. Sometimes I would not even leave my room because of all of the toxicity, extortion, stress, etc. So let that man rest because he's done a lot for everyone he encountered. Rip Juice. So according to him, Juice World got mad at him for telling him the truth about her and afterwards 
Ali kept Juice away from people like him, who really cared about him, driving him through crazy manipulation. Not a good look for Ali. However, this wasn't the only time Ali displayed this ugly behavior. Before dating Ali, Juice had previously dated a singer known as Starfire. She was actually the inspiration for many of Juice's songs. Juice and Ali seemed to be on good terms until Starfire talked about their messy breakup, basically just standing up for herself. Juice responded to her via a tweet stating, LMAO, don't get mad because you treated me like sh and you got sh back, dookie for dookie kiddo. Lottie is a thousand times better than any of my past relationships ever, genuinely has my best interests at hand. All I must say about it, if you know, you know. Disclaimer, no one really knows the truth of what happened. But Ali quoted Juice's tweet and replied, silly girl will do anything for his attention, stop worrying about him and his actions, he's mine to worry about. I believe this is what women refer to as a girl's girl. On top of that, Ali Lottie continued to lie about the details of Juice World's passing, like saying the cops were lying. Claiming like the cop lied and like, she's trying to say it's a conspiracy thing. Oh, sh bro. Yeah, and like the, like you didn't see the footage, like the cops are lying, blah, blah, blah. Making fans believe Juice was being blackmailed by a gang. So then people start thinking that he was associated with certain gangs because he had like 40 pounds of weed on the on the jet yeah. and so they thought that he was funding a gang or like the gang was blackmailing him into funding it and that kind of stuff and yeah you could see why fans were mad but hey it couldn't get worse than that right well it did sometime during the end of 2022 Ali Lottie began dating an 18 year old named Carter Jameson. Now not only are we seeing a pattern with the men she chooses, but we're also seeing why she enraged fans so much. You see Carter was later seen wearing jewelry that Juice had given to Ali. Along with that, he was also wearing clothes that Juice owned. Earlier that year, he posted an Instagram story with one of Juice World's songs playing, but that wasn't the weird part. The fan asked if it was his watch. He said no. It was quote unquote Ali's, which just meant Juice's, and the one next to it was Juice's 200k watch. He was also wearing a one on one piece for Juice World at his TED talk about scamming people. But fans were still yet to witness the worst of the couple, because on January 26th of 2023, things got really bad. And by bad, I just mean horribly embarrassing. According to court documents obtained by TMZ Hip Hop, Ali Lottie was accused of felony possession of methamphetamine, coke, and heroin. According to cops, the store's security cameras caught Ali and Jameson at a self-checkout station where they failed to scan several items, including wall mirrors, a bed frame, a bath towel, and a digital scale. According to the docs, the arresting officer found capsules of cocaine in Ali's pocket and purse. They were both arrested and bonded out the same day. Lil Bibby, Juice World's manager and label owner's reaction was, free Ali. In the end, Ali ended up pleading guilty to a misdemeanor possession of instruments of crime and got a one year suspended sentence and six months probation. If she stayed sober, she would walk free. Her boyfriend just paid a fine. Later, their lawyer explained that it was just a misunderstanding and they thought they had already scanned and paid for it, explaining his clients would never take something intentionally and this just seems like a misunderstanding. Ali did plead guilty though. And if they couldn't make the situation worse, they decided to flex on everyone after getting out. On her Instagram story, Ali wrote, Came home the other night to my new penthouse overlooking the river and my brand new 023 engine T. The green bow was everything. At Carter Jameson, you moved mountains for me to be home for my gifts, aka your brand new matching Bentley. Your surprises are exquisite and your promises you never break. DNA emoji. Wow. But you see, this wasn't her first rodeo. Ali Lottie had been arrested back before even meeting Juice World, and it wasn't for shoplifting. It turned out this wasn't her first time being arrested for possession of m According to public legal documents, the United States District Court, Southern District of California, claimed she was importing from Mexico, which means she was selling more than 14 grams, and this charge was much more serious than a regular charge. It could have meant that she was importing large quantities from other countries, but that's a reach, and she would probably be in jail for a lot longer than she was. What it really meant was she had an extensive criminal history, which could have rubbed off on juice and exacerbated problems. But once again, and by now this has become a common theme, this truly wasn't the worst thing Ali Lottie did. Because in the middle of 2023, Ali Lottie began auctioning off Juice World's former items. On Instagram, Ali announced she was supposedly selling exclusive Juice World memory filled package deals. The user on Instagram, a Juice World fan page, explained that they were trying to auction off Juice World's iconic transparent Louis Vuitton prism backpack, partnering with Ali. I am selling the coveted transparent prism Louis Vuitton backpack that was once owned by the late and beloved Juice World. This unique piece is not only a symbol of style but also a valuable collector's item with a fascinating backstory. To ensure transparency and authenticity, I have acquired this backpack with the assistance of Ali Lottie. 
Juice World's ex-girlfriend, who was kind enough to provide proof and direct messages regarding its ownership. It was seen war on Juice World multiple times, for example, in his Hot Ones episode. The user also explained there were other Juice World items ready to sell after this one. Just a couple days earlier, she was exposed in the DMs for trying to negotiate prices for the same or similar Juice World possessions. Sock this uh. She was taking shorts. Is that the real little baby? Yeah, that's the little baby. talking about that. He not mad? And the way she was DMing was very weird. Well, I'm not trying to sell, so I don't have a price in mind. Well, why are you DMing him? I got you on like a package deal or something, but like I said, stuff like this is pretty priceless to me and it's only going to be worth more money in the future. I would like to be walking away with like 30K, honestly, you know? So what's your budget? We can figure out what we can do. I don't know about you guys, but it sounded like me like she was trying to sell a fan something for exactly 30,000. This made fans enraged. Like if you truly love Juice World. You wouldn't be selling his belongings and he would want you to like go be a participating member of society and go make your own money like sure you don't have him to fund you your lifestyle and everything but holy sh thirty thousand dollars just for his belongings like she I, I don't know if she's gotten exposed for selling leaks although some people have been suspicious of it like some even alleged that she had been selling juice world's music for money as well where did some of these songs come from especially when uh, their songs directly for her that were not supposed to be public. Now, people have gotten into her iClouds and everything, but again, if you loved him, why would you sell his belongings? At this point, most people thought she was broke. She had, uh, she got some old memorabilia from Juice World. Weird, bitch. And she's trying to sell it. She, I think she, she probably went broke. She's trying to cash out on some of his old items and shit. But regardless of what they thought, everyone agreed this was extremely disrespectful. You weird ass bitch. I ain't gonna lie, this is a different type of disrespect for you. wouldn't give it to yeah. his mother. You wouldn't give it to, you know what I'm saying? Put that shit in a museum or something. You see, drugs were the crux of not only Juice World's life, but also the relationship. In fact, it made things so hard at times that Juice World tried to quit just for Ali. Six months before Juice World's untimely passing, he said he's leaving drugs because it got in the way of his relationship. One day in July of 2019, Juice World tweeted, I'm gonna leave that shit alone for good. Watch me. I'm done with it. At first, fans thought it was just a random tweet. However, right after Ali Ladi quote tweeted and said, please, fans realized it was about sobriety. Afterwards, Juice World apologized to her, writing, Bay, I'm sorry to be tweaking. You put up with more than people know. I know I'd be scaring you. F I'm done. I love you and I'm letting it be known publicly that ain't shit f***ing up the real love I found. Learn from this, everyone. Addiction kills all, but you can overcome. And he reassured everyone that he was going to do the work required to quit for Ali, tweeting, I got work to do. A lot. So you can imagine when parasocial fans found out Ali was the one not enabling him, was not was the one not only enabling him, but teaching him how to do certain substances, they were enraged. You see, Ali may have said one thing, but her actions told a whole another story. For starters, if you take a trip to YouTube, there are compilations of Ali Lottie being a horrible influence on Juice World. For example, in one video, Ali says lean isn't allowed in the household, but takes them as well. Nice one. On top of that, in an unreleased song called Hotel Room, Juice alluded to her encouraging substances. In that song, Juice said, Maybe it's the love, maybe it's the drug, maybe it's because my girlfriend is the plug. Starfire, Juice's girlfriend before Ali, stated that Ali was very weird to Juice in several tweets while Juice and Starfire were together. I never checked Jared's phone once and Ali was harassing him in the DMs the whole time and eventually he went for it. We all know how that turned out so don't even start with me. On top of that, she was very irresponsible. For example, she had three pregnancies with Juice World. There was three separate times. Wow. But because of stress, because of everything going on, there was obviously different complications with different ones. But And Juice World actually wanted kids. However, she convinced him not to. When it comes down to kids, I was always like, I want to make sure that my child had a father. And that's why I was like, and I never wanted a child until Jared was like, no, we're, like you're having, like, this is what's happening. Right. And like, <laughs> no, like it wasn't like a choice. It was like, this is what's happening. Which looking at now was definitely the right choice, but at the time, quite manipulative. According to her, she would be a great mom, but Juice would be a horrible father. And if you're telling me that this is what it would take for you to just, uh, all right, here's my body. It's yours anyway. Like, sure. You know right. what I mean? Like, we're having a kid, but you're going to be a good dad. Like, you're going to be a good dad, that's why. Because, like, I obviously am, like, I'm, I'm good at being a mom, but, like, I got to do it. Right. And that scares me. It was at this point when I think fans really began to hate her. 
By the way, all while this would happen, Ali would make posts where she would reveal how traumatized she was, stating that she couldn't fly on planes or hear sirens. To this day, I cannot get on a plane or hear sirens. Too triggering. I remember those moments minute by minute. Last year feels like minutes away. No way I can write anything right now. I feel each minute of the past days and tonight like a movie from before. Feeling every emotion, I remember you told me to go back and watch this if I ever miss you. You sang this to me for weeks. My king. What's the catch? I love you forever, that means forever. This is super messed up by the way, but after her behavior, most fans just believe she was doing this for attention. But Ali Lottie's relationship with the public and fans wasn't always like this. When Juice first passed, it seemed like everything was going to be fine and that Ali was dead set on maintaining Juice World's legacy. For example, at the Juice World tribute concert, Ali gave a really respectful speech to fans, saying, Let everyone know that um, Jared loved every single person that he helped on this earth he literally loved every single one of you guys there's not a time that he had showed me any different love that he felt for you like he wants everyone to know that you need to take any negative any negative thing in your life he would tell you every time he saw you and change that to a positive situation he did change that to 999 it seemed like Ali was doing everything she could do to show how much she loved Juice and he loved her. Six months after the passing, Ali was feeling sick and she was clearly still mourning his loss, writing, I'm extremely sick right now, but I know you were here with me, baby, helping me, protecting me. Not just today, but always. Seven months, it has not gotten easier, but only a little clearer. Jay, please keep over me. Protect me from whatever is making me sick. I know you are, baby. God is with us, always, endlessly. But acts of kindness in public towards your partner doesn't really mean you love someone. To see how much he really loved her, you have to look at all the small details. Juice wrote Ali letters and stuck it inside her wallet, and she shared it on the one year anniversary of his passing. According to Ali, Juice wrote this back in the first quarter of 2019 when Juice opened for Nicki Minaj on her tour. She said that Juice snuck the letters into her wallet where they remained unseen until Ali dug into her wallet to pay for the outfit she wore to Juice's funeral in December of 2019. She said they read, You are my Sandy, you are my safe heaven, my first and last true love, my BFF, my home, you are my everything. I've been broken for so long without repair, you fix me permanently, so I cannot let you out of my sight. You are my umbrella when it's raining, you keep me dry from my own tears and the tears of the world. Still not convinced? Here's another conversation she shared. Juice said, I love you so much. Ali said, I love you too, Jay. Too much. You are visiting strong. I'll always be there for you. Juice, see, you are one of the main sources of my strength, so I need you by my side, forever and ever. I love you, baby. Ali wrote, I love you. Juice said, I love you so much, baby. You are my inspiration. You give me the strength to conquer my anxiety and whatever the devil throws my way. You are such a big help. Every situation that can be helped, you help. And for the battles that I have to fight myself, you give me the strength for. Thank you for being the amazing woman you are. You are my forever. Ali wrote, Being able to be that person to you is an honor. I adore you beyond word. Supporting you in every adventure will always make me feel or feel like home with just one kiss. I love you forever. You are my forever. Juice, know that you take my breath away every second of the day. That's all I want to do. Juice wrote, That's one of the main things you do do. You are so amazing. Ali finally said, that's you, my love, you are my world. Yeah, they were definitely in love, or at least it seems so. Definitely on Juice's end. But all of this was put in serious question when Ali Lottie's dating history was revealed. You see, Juice World wasn't Ali's only rapper boyfriend. It turned out she was with almost every SoundCloud rapper you can imagine. One of her most famous flings was Smoke Perp, who she even has a tweet of saying, anyone know someone at NYC to tattoo me and Perp? Right now, let me know ASAP. Another was Trippy Red, who she also said this about. I didn't mean to fall in love with Trippy Red, but she also indulged in a couple of the classics as well, or at least tried to. In 2018, Ali's iCloud got hacked and it was revealed that she was trying to get in contact with Lil Pump. And what would you know? What makes it even worse or more concerning is that Pump was not even 18 at the time. Of course, 2018 was when Lil Pump was in his prime, but that didn't stop her from getting with Lil Skies, who she posted these videos on her story. And if she couldn't look worse, she was allegedly messing with Smoke Perp and Kodak Black at the same time. What do I mean? Well, there are videos of them kissing in late 2017, but what makes the situation even crazier is this video. Kodak was like, you f***ed the lame. And I was like, and then he was like, I see you f with Perp. And I was like, you're not gonna drop this. So then I was like, what, you don't like Perp? And to top it all off, she was also associated with Offset. In late 2018, Ali made a tweet talking about how she hopped off of Offset's plane and how upset Cardi B was at the time. Long story short, she got involved with Smoke Perp, Offset, Trippy Red, Lil Pump, 
and Kodak Black all within one to two years of meeting Juice. And those are just the names that we know. But you know, what really takes the cake in this whole situation is not this. It's the fact that she didn't even like Juice World or his music, which was exposed after this video leaked of her saying this. And this is why I can't listen to the radio. So Ali had dissed Lucid Dreams before she met Juice when she claimed in interviews that she was really impressed with hearing his music for the first time. Okay, so by now I think we can all agree she 100% did not have good intentions. This made many fans question whether or not Ali really loved Juice. Did she actually care about him? Want to get better? It didn't look like it. But we still haven't gone over the worst thing Ali Lottie has done since Juice's passing, which is try and use her and Juice's alleged videos to promote her content. And try isn't even accurate because she succeeded. You see, remember when Ali was talking about Juice World's passing being fake back in the end of 2022? It turns out it was all part of her evil plan to promote her own content. Wink wink. What's interesting is she had actually assured fans nothing like this would ever occur because she had a legacy to uphold. Trying to uphold a legacy my name is attached to, I would never be on here acting like that or posting or doing anything like but still trying to acknowledge Jared's legacy and be part of that. But on September 25th, 2022, Ali Lottie began first posting content to the website that cannot be named. Yes, uh, Ali Lottie, Juice World's ex-girl, officially gotten on. Let's check it out real quick. At first, many fans defended this, saying she was just doing this to make ends meet. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, people are like, yo, she got to make a bag somehow because she's not, she doesn't have any master's ownership or like she doesn't get any revenue from Juice World's music. They weren't married. So, you know, like their, their bank accounts were not joint. Oh. And she had actually been teasing this for months. According to her, it was going to be a place where she would commemorate her and Juice. On Twitter, she wrote, A free fan page so cult fans can see clips of him and I, happy SMH. It was just like something I just randomly said to a random fan saying I might since I work with or for Fenty. Like y'all too much sometimes. I be trying to do shit for y'all and you want to make it into something. So she was basically gaslighting them. And fans were even standing up for her, saying things like, Can't believe people actually took this the wrong way, LMAO. Sure, only f kind of generally sexual now, but there's no way Ali was about to post that type of stuff. But if only they knew the horrors that Ali would post. The worst was when she teased an alleged video of her in Juice World that was unreleased. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Because on January 17th, 2024, Ali made a post on her content page. And I'm not going to pop up the image out of respect, but I'll read what she wrote, or at least the clean version. My ex hackers are threatening to leak me and my old Beyonce Juice World's tape. Anymore, I'll leak it myself. It's been a long time since I've. I cannot. I cannot even read what she wrote after this. I'm so mad that I'm adding every. Oh, that I ever sent him. At least you will enjoy it. I can't believe I'm actually sending this, but I can't be threatened anymore. God, if I had read those blanks, you would have. Uh, your jaw would have dropped. But this is YouTube. It was rumored that Juice's label owner bought the video. This behavior just had fans shocked because she had now gone the full nine yards and it was clear she had no remorse. Previously, she had said that she just wanted Juice to remain happy. He was just literally so in love with you guys and would work 24 seven for you guys. And that's how I need you to remember him. I do not need you guys to remember him in any other way. I took on that trauma myself and because it's not it's not how you guys should remember him at all. Now she believed he had prepared her for this. I have a feeling he's rolling in his grave right now. What I can do is make sure that you remember him in the way that he was and the way that he planned the way that he wanted and I have all of that. He prepped me for all of that without me even realizing. But the debauchery didn't stop there. Later that year, she continued to sell Juice's stuff. Another batch of Jay's stuff, Need Money for Boyfriend's Bail Money by Monday. Supreme Boxers, 200. Mystery Dirty Laundry Pack, 1 of 10, 2,500. Preserved Juice Dread, 1,100. Special Deal, 10 for 999. Dalmatian Supreme Tea, 550. One ounce vial of Juice's Juice. Thanks guys, I work really hard for what I have right now. Life is great. So you see, Fans were insanely mad when they saw this on the internet. However, it turned out it was fake. What's crazy is, as ridiculous as it was, because of her actions, everyone believed it. Almost like the boy who cried wolf. 
but Ali was a bit slimy herself because she used this fake image to promote her content. So she still ended up disappointing fans. It was bad, but Ali wasn't the only one who tried to sell their boyfriends or ex-boyfriends memorabilia. The next woman on this list is the infamous Asian doll, who's most famously known for being King Von's boyfriend, but also for her history of being very problematic. For example, in September 4th of 2020, she was pulled over by police and landed herself behind bars. That day, Vaughn retweeted a tweet saying, I think about us. So she tweeted, I think about us too, but hey, look, I'm in jail. Come bond me out. Pretending like he was reminiscing about her. Nice one. King Vaughn ignored her. And that was probably for good reason, because the same month, she got into it with another rapper, Tory Lanez, who dissed her in a song, rapping, Asian doll talking, but shoddy, I don't know you, never met you, nor have I heard a song, and nor have I seen any billboards. Basically making fun of her success, or lack of success. Asian doll actually clapped back, and was not very kind to him, tweeting, If that was me, you wouldn't even have lips to rap about Your face would have been in your lap the moment you decide you wanted to shoot me in the foot, bitch. She then said, dissed all females and it was a hundred rap guys that called him out. Lol, straight bitch. You a straight bitch. That's how we know you shot her bitch. And I'm not gonna lie, she kind of stood on business right here. She also tweeted that she would allegedly have him taken care of. Tori got to count his days. No cap, that's all I must say. I'm not dissing no on no f***ing track about it guy that deserves to be a body. Bagged. But this random drama was nothing new. Asian Doll had been saying the most crazy things imaginable for a while now. For example, the month later, Asian Doll claimed that she only dates killers with at least three bodies, tweeting, please have at least three bodies before you talk to me. Boy, I like This tweet ended up getting 1,000 quote tweets of people expressing their disgust. But to her credit, she did date King Von, who was charged with one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder following a shooting in May of 2014. However, as they say, be careful for what you wish for, as not only did they break up because Von cheated on her months later, the next month, King Von was taken out himself. At first, Asian Doll, like any partner or ex-partner, sent her condolences and grieved him. Von, you beat the odds, you won the war, and you became a legend. You was gonna be Tupac, statues, for show. Since you've been gone, I've been seeing you every day in my dreams. If I speak your name, I get chills. You're literally living through me. I feel you every second I take a breath. But here's the thing. King Von's passing wasn't an accident. According to many, it was actually due to a beef between him and NBA Youngboy. What's even crazier is that Asian Doll very well could have instigated, or at least riled it up. But to understand how, we have to go all the way to the beginning of their relationship. King Von and Asian Doll originally got together because they were on the same label. King Von had a crush on Asian, and they got together after just one date. And they lived happily ever after. Just kidding, because that year King Von got arrested for attempted murder. Asian Doll was distraught and could be seen crying on Instagram Live, but he eventually got bailed out, and when he did, he gave someone the beats for calling Asian a bitch to show that he loved her, you know? However, issues soon arose because Asian Doll was a rapper herself. You see, King Von preferred that Asian Doll be a more stay at home type of girlfriend, but because of her occupation, that wasn't really possible. Has somebody in the same industry as you? No, that ain't, I'd rather have. You know, I wish you, you know, I can't say I wish you wanted a rapper or nothing like that, but it'd be better if I knew that she's at the house. This meant that she would be meeting other rappers, and Vaughn didn't like that. Instead of going around all these people that ain't around, and damn, I'm, what's going on? Now I'm just thinking, are you, damn, what the f she doing? Why she answering the phone? And that's how she be she feeling. She feel the, the same way. I just yeah. said that. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wish my nigga was in the damn house. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, so you it's been times when you didn't like a nigga and she had to work with him. I'm not going to say nothing. Man. And other than those clips, Vaughn had repeatedly made it obvious that Asian was his. Here's where it began to get weird, though. In 2019, Vaughn began beefing with NBA Youngboy in a very confusing manner. He dissed Youngboy, but also repeated his lyrics and mannerisms, leaving fans scratching their heads. Then, in May of 2020, Vaughn tweeted that he was going through a rough breakup. A few days later, Vaughn was seen spending time with Youngboy's baby mama, Janaya, and everyone assumed that this meant they were, you know. But Janaya denied it, explaining that her and Vaughn were just making music. We walked to the table to play the little game after my studio session, and I went home. That's Y'all trying to make stories out of nothing off that man. Like I said, I don't quit no n I I been working. We have a song coming out. Y'all wasn't supposed to know, but it is what it is now. We have a song coming out. So when the song come out, y'all gonna f with it. Just know it's hard as However, Asian Doll wasn't gonna take that type of disrespect and clap back and explain that they were already DMing each other when Vaughn and her were together. I seen it. Them DMs, I've been seeing none of this not a surprise. So all that song that she did, you on dick. From there, Vaughn and Youngboy would go on to diss each other multiple times. Meanwhile, Asian Doll took to Instagram live saying she didn't care about any of this. Nobody embarrassed me, gang. Y'all need to get off my dick. Like nobody embarrassed me. Nobody. 
It's nothing nobody did to embarrass me. I was not embarrassed. Like, damn, y'all hoes mad about a tweet. Like, y'all, like, dude, I don't even know you. Clowns, the f get left for me. The f smack the out of one of you with me. You crazy. And she was too real to care about any of it. You know, I'm a real bitch at the end of the day. Like I said, you would never see me sweat. You would never see me go outside behind nobody. I don't give who you is, friend, anybody. Mind your business when I'm single like that don't have nothing to do with me. I'm not stressing that shit. I'm not tweeting about nothing. They don't have to do with me, gang. Nothing. When somebody's single, so what? What they do? I don't give a f That's what y'all problem. So, it was all good, right? Well, not really, because that's when Vaughn announced something huge. That Asian Doll had slept with NBA Youngboy, tweeting, once you let another guy get it for show, I don't want it no more. Obviously, this was huge, as it meant that Asian Doll and Youngboy both got their revenge on Vaughn, which no one who really loved their ex-partner would do. And Asian Doll even alluded to being with Youngboy on her song No Exposure, which she seemed to admit to doing twice on that song. However, the real proof came when a screenshot appeared of Youngboy DMing one of his producers through Asian Doll's Instagram account, proving that he and Asian had definitely done something together. So what was the problem, right? Vaughn cheated, and Asian cheated too, right? Well, they're both in the wrong, but Asian Doll's association with Youngboy was one of the factors that sent their beef over the edge and made Vaughn seriously retaliate. Which made sense, as Vaughn had previously stated how possessive he was over Asian. But before it could heat up even more, it burnt out. A deadly shootout broke out outside the Monaco Hookah Lounge in downtown Atlanta, with gunfire being exchanged between King Vaughn and his friends and another rapper, Quando Rondo, and his friends. The result? King Vaughn passed away. Quando Rondo was an affiliate of NBA Youngboys, and many pointed to Vaughn and Youngboys beef, and many blamed Vaughn's death on Vaughn and Youngboys beef, which I just explained to you, Asian kinda had a hand in. So you can see why when Asian Doll said that Vaughn and Youngboy had no beef, which she already instigated, fans were mad. You see, the same month Vaughn passed, Asian Doll said this, I got a song with NBA Youngboy. Vaughn's got a song with Youngboy. Who's the op? Only ops is you. Op ass people in our mother business. Back to the mother story. Bitch. Continued, this talking about the ops, this ain't even his ops. Get your clown ass on. You don't even know what the f you're talking about. That's how you know you're just talking. Y'all just making up sh in your mother Cause that sh sounds good and that sh looks good, but it ain't that. But at the time, many people were still giving Asian doll to sympathy. The Cuban doll, yes, there are multiple dolls, actually called her out, also on Twitter, writing, same I was rubbing my mom's death in my face, explaining that when her mother passed, Asian Doll made fun of her for it, which is pretty messed up. And this is where Asian Doll's behavior really started to get weird and creepy. You see, when Vaughn passed, Asian Doll hadn't been dating him or with him for months. However, the day after the situation, she claimed to have known what had happened. According to her, Vaughn's friend abandoned him and left him to get shot and killed, tweeting, Vaughn's last words, Y'all let them get up on me. Stop crying. Y'all let them get on me. Y'all left my boy when he was unarmed and he would have hawked mother down for them and spinned again and again and again. Shit crazy. I knew my boy's heart and loyalty wasn't deserved. He okay though. She later deleted the tweet, but basically accused everyone around Vaughn for using him and being fake and knowing what he said before he passed, which is crazy, especially when you take into account that she wasn't there. Vaughn's manager, who also got shot, but survived that night, was furious and clapped back. Let one more person from the outside that's close to Vaughn keep on with all this goofy because I was there and got shit behind this shit. Y'all stop blaming people y'all don't even know what happened or who was involved, they'll see one camera angle and think they'll gotta figure it out. That goes for ex-girlfriend, family, or whoever. And it was pretty obvious this was pointed at Asian Doll. But you know what's even crazier? The fact that she was getting this info from herself or her supposed talks with Vaughn in the afterlife. You cannot make this up. Vaughn's manager told DJ Academics, she's talking about, she's talking to Vaughn through her spiritual advisor from the death. He told academics, Vaughn from the afterlife is telling Asian Doll these facts, guys. Most people would just admit they're being crazy and apologize. However, Asian Doll was different. She doubled down and told them to stop making fun of her spiritual conversations that she had with Vaughn on Instagram. Couldn't even think of Vaughn without thinking of me. I had this man's best interest since day one. We both came from rough environments. Seeing how crazy Vaughn lifestyle was inspired me to change and peace with God for us. I always had spiritual conversations with you and I want you to know God loves you and you're the chosen one and you believe me. I was becoming a woman and you're the reason why and that's some nobody can ever take from me. I was so proud of you, baby. You just make me even prouder. Words can't explain. I'ma miss you physically, but you're forever living through me. King Vaughn and Queen Vaughn for life. His last slide is a throwback. But that wasn't enough cloud chasing for her. She also went on live to explain herself. In it, she said she wasn't delusional about any of this. Seeing that I talked to Vaughn spiritually, like just, you will see, like, you know, everybody has their day. And this is not a joke, it's not funny. 
I'm not fucking delusional. I'm not losing my mind. Like, I'm coming to reality, and that's what's bringing me so much peace and so much joy. And that she was King Von's main girlfriend. It was up, Queen Von, and that's what the fuck it is. And I'm Queen Von, and nobody gonna never be able to take that from me. No fucking body. None. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. And that's just what it is. And if something were to happen to her, Vaughn would do the same that she was doing right now. Uh, last night, remember, he ignored her. It is, and, I, and I'm woman enough to get on this to say that me and Vaughn was not together when he died. Me and Vaughn was not together when he died. Y'all seen what happened, y'all seen the internet stuff, but y'all seen how I'm carrying this shit on my shoulders, on my mother back, because if that shit, me and Vaughn would have not been together, if something happened to me or my mama, Vaughn would have had my family. No, he would not have said that. You guys had a spiritual conversation. And this. Vaughn would have reached out to my family. Vaughn would have stood right there with my mama, head up. My boy would have made sure my family was straight. My boy would have made sure my family, and it's, that's, that's all that fucking matters. Literally. Literally. And if anybody on this playing with me and, and, and making jokes about this shit, this shit's not real. This is not funny. This shit is real. This shit is my life. And this shit is reality. But that wasn't enough. Asian Doll needed more attention. So she took to Instagram to share something else. A tattoo on her hand of King Von himself as a tribute. She captioned the post, You know how it go when we don't even play like that? This is the hardest tattoo on my body. But to be honest, getting a tattoo in honor of a loved one isn't anything weird. However, the problem many people questioned or not was, was Asian Doll actually being genuine when she got it? One of them was DJ Academics, who after all of this decided to expose what he thought was fake, Asian Doll. At this point, fans had already gotten tired of her, commenting things like, Asian Doll then turned King Von's death into a personality trait, and academics even referred to the rapper as Queen Von. But in a since deleted Instagram live, he went further into the subject, where he explained Asian Doll was lame, saying, Tix will instigate a beef and then you get clapped, and then she calls herself Queen Von. I just don't want that to happen to me. He then claimed that Asian Doll showed up to the funeral just collecting clout. Accusing Asian Doll of manufacturing fake tears, which he believed was all just a ploy, an attempt to gain some public sympathy for more clout. He also said that those around Vaughn claimed that he didn't even like her like that, stating, the manager looking at me like, yo, King Vaughn didn't even f with her, which says everything you need to know about their relationship. So by now it's pretty clear Asian Doll loves attention, but you see, she didn't just love that, she also loved drama. Because the next month, she started beefing with a couple of her former friends. In December of that year, Megan Thee Stallion did not include Asian Doll's part in a song titled Do It On The Tip. Wait, what? At first, Asian went in on Instagram Live saying she didn't know why she was removed. Oh yeah, that other song, I, I was supposed to do that song, I don't know what happened. But I'll play it for y'all. And reassured everybody that her and Megan were still friends, tweeting, me and Megan still friends, I don't give a f about no song I did in my sleep. But it was pretty obvious she was upset because she was talking about it. But you see, Asian wasn't making a fuss over nothing. The song was a big deal. Firstly, she had just parted ways with Gucci Mane and was independent. So if she was on the song, she would have benefited greatly. But more importantly, you know who was on it? The City Girls who Asian Doll happened to have beef with. This made it even worse because clearly Megan prioritized successful artists over her friend Asian, who she had promised would be on the song. But that wasn't what sparked the beef. A member of the City Girls came out and tweeted that Asian was being a about the situation, and by that I mean even making it one. Writing, a real friend is something you don't really know anything about. I've been doing good, but I'm a star, playing y'all attention seeking girls out, and I'm coming with facts. Sympathetic girls are really starting to grind my gears for real, like, if you know it's gonna draw attention and cause commotion, why speak on it, mind you, lying, but go off. Clearly, JT and the city girls weren't rocking with Asian. So I guess Asian Doll expected Megan to show her some support. Instead, Megan the Stallion was showing JT love on her Instagram live. This broke Asian's heart, as she had previously defended Megan, like when she was shot by Tory Lanez. I'm gonna shoot who already lost both of their parents. Now I'm gonna shoot a bitch with a genuine heart who's not malicious, none of that. Then y'all trying to tell me to stop, delete, delete my tweets because I'm defending my friend. So from there, Asian Doll and JT began going back and forth on Twitter. Asian Doll started by tweeting, Glad I've been pretty my whole life. JT took this as a diss because people compared her mugshot with Asian Doll's mugshot at the time. So she tweeted, like Asian let it go. You get on the internet weekly looking for drama to get posted on blogs. You've been salty for a while. Asian Doll. I'll never be salty because I make tweets and they get posted on national TV. You girls selling your soul for this go to hell. JT. City Girls came in and put all the dolls to rest. Let's talk about it 2016 Big Moon Boots where an irrelevant girl better find a toy. Asian Doll. Big 
You remember my outfits from 2016? Yeah, you've been a fan and you still ugly and salty. You can't even get one of those rappers to cuff your dog looking self. That's why you mad. That aged kind of poorly because she's now dating Lil Uzi. Looks get you nowhere, but drop from every label. God must have dropped you on your head. To think that you could f with me and be so desperate. Getting taken off songs for the longest hollering gangbanger. Better go head on. You've been singing my song since I've been dropping. Only song I got took off of was Megan and Ferg song. Because I'd be watching you girls. Literally watching you girls. So clearly they were pretty mad at each other. And I guess JT had enough. Because she went on live explaining that Asian was mad. Because she thought she deserved the spot. Y'all be, be mad because y'all feel like me and Carisha not deserving. If me and Carisha wasn't on do it on the tip. So that's why she was overcompensating by being hostile on the internet. She wanted to be jump tasked on the internet trying to prove that she's a super rapper that's all y'all try to do oh y'all try to prove that y'all are super rappers i don't give a f i do that in my sleep i'm a super rapper for real she ended it by explaining she didn't have to prove anything because her track record spoke for itself and then you don't never see me on here trying to mother prove that i'm a super rapper i a feature catalog we we carried into 2021 we gonna let's talk about bookings and festivals something y'all been Thank God. So to her, all of this happened because Asian Doll was jealous that her career isn't where the City Girls was at. But you see, as I said earlier, this wasn't anything new. Asian Doll and the City Girls had had beef, and just like Megan, they started out as friends too. At one point, Asian Doll was actually supposed to have a collab with ASAP Ferg and the City Girls. However, when a tweet was made saying she likes to write her own songs, JT thought it was a diss against them because Lil Yachty wrote their hit song, Act Up, and Asian Doll was taking out the song. From there, Asian threatened JT and explained that she wanted to give her the beats. I actually want to fight. Yeah, I'm gang. Gang. However you want to call it. Remember, I'm the only rat that could actually beat the f out of you rat. In the end, JT finally alluded to the meetup, tweeting, Asian, you in Miami now, huh? But she quickly just laughed it off, tweeting, I'm just playing y'all. And that was that. Just kidding. Because you probably noticed something. The person who started this altercation hadn't said anything yet. That being Megan the Stallion. Well, that was about to change. Because Megan also hopped on Twitter and explained her side. Explaining that she was kind of tired of having to defend herself over every little insignificant thing. Reading, if I got on this app trying to defend myself every time someone makes up stuff about me, or clapping back at random mother I don't know I'd be miserable all day every day. I hate that all of this is getting so blown out of proportion, it was never as deep as the comments made it seem. She also responded to a fan saying that she should have defended Asian Doll early on, tweeting, We got each other's number in real life, I don't have to say anything to nobody on this app. She then responded to someone saying that she didn't defend Asian when Asian defended her. When Asian got into her accident, I hopped right on the plane to come see her when she would go through stuff I'm on her line. I don't be putting my personal life on the internet because it's personal to me. I never saw people attacking her. So clearly, according to her, she was being a good friend. But that's when Asian decided to chime in and say, We was real friends, f rap. You should have said something yesterday, cleared up stuff. But no, you let that girl get in your ear and you don't even know that girl. Megan responded and basically confirmed Asian was tweaking. Asian, you know me better than that. You know I don't even like all this internet sh you blow stuff out of proportion because you are a hothead. You played the song on live. That was that. What do I need to clear up? This is dumb. So Asian Doll was clearly hurt because she felt like Megan was not defending her the way she should defend her. And she expressed this. And yet another Instagram live. She said that this drama had been going on for a while. It just, and then everybody just right now too, they just seeing everything that's coming into light. Everything, this shit been going on. Everything just coming into light. You see what I'm saying, gang? And there was no drama anymore. I don't got, I don't want, I don't want no, I ain't, I did. It is what it is now. But at first, I ain't want no, no drama. I ain't want no nothing. She also said that she wasn't really talking about Megan. When, when I tweeted that me and Megan still cool, I don't give a f um, about the song and shit like that. I, I wasn't even really cool with me. I wasn't even really talking to Megan like that. But yeah, sure. And that the internet had riled her up. But I just seen everybody on the internet just keep seeing Asian, Asian verse was this, Asian verse was that. I'm seeing this shit just like everybody else seeing this shit, just like she's seeing this shit. And I said that to defend her. This relationship on the internet where Megan was defending her was the same behind closed doors. Hey, you tweaking, you need to chill. Like, you she should have told her, you need to chill out. What you talking about? Like, you doing too much. That's it. It's a one-sided friendship when it comes to the internet. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's it. But behind closed doors, it was that. But and in the end, she realized it was like every other interaction in the music industry. Fake. When it, when it comes to the internet, when it comes to the public, when it comes to the music industry and all this lame <laughs> shit, it's a one-sided friendship and it's cool. Because motherfuckers been seeing it, but I just, I'm, I learn on my own. Can't nobody tell me nothing. 
but it's cool. It's, it's, it's cool. Oh, she just had to come to terms with the fact that the industry was fake and her relationship with Megan was one-sided, but she didn't in time and burned a valuable bridge. But you see, Asian Doll wasn't done milking King Vaughn's passing because in the beginning of the next year in 2021, she admitted that she and Vaughn were not on good terms at the time of Vaughn's passing. Six days before he passed away, we had broken up and I was real hard on him. I was not trying to see him. I did not want to see him at yeah. all. Which made everything she had just done super unnecessary, or maybe from guilt. But this admission of guilt didn't stop Asian Doll. A couple months later, King Vaughn's sister took to Twitter and posted the videos and pictures from a baby shower. But it wasn't hers. It was an announcement that King Vaughn was expecting a child with a woman named Skylar. Of course, Asian Doll decided she had to make this about herself and took to social media to explain that she wasn't with King Vaughn when the baby was conceived. I wasn't with Vaughn June, July, August, September, or October. I started seeing him at the end of November when he booked me for a show. So nothing going on is affecting me, no way. Literally, I still love him, he not here. So after all of this, you'd probably think that Asian Doll would never disrespect King Vaughn. But once again, she surprised us all. In November of that year, a clip of Asian Doll surfaced where she compares Jack Boys, her new man, to King Vaughn. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with nobody who I just feel like is gonna just like crash out and pass away. Like that's stupid. She literally calls King Vaughn a crash out, a term used for someone who did something very stupid and faced whatever consequences resulting from their actions. This was very different from how she had previously portrayed Vaughn, so many were shocked and outraged. One of them being King Vaughn's first baby mama, who responded that Vaughn didn't crash out and pass away, tweeting, my baby daddy didn't crash out and die. He served his purpose in life, and when God felt like it was his time, he called him home. No, it wasn't ideal for us, but that's not for us to determine. At this point, it was pretty clear, Asian Doll was only grieving for clout, because by now, it had been only a year where she was extremely distraught, and she was tweeting at Jack Boy to marry her. Jack need to marry me, let's tie this knot. She also tweeted, I'm gonna get married and pregnant and still be Queen Vaughn and still stalked SMH. She also shared a DM from Kima one month before his passing, claiming that she was a clout chaser and tweeted another response. My sh just hit different in real life. Through all that studying, reading books, and shitting army guns still ain't get you wife yet, lol. Not before his d nor after his d Yikes, end. Let me focus on my wedding. Referring to her current boyfriend, Jack Boy. But Asian Doll could not catch any slack. Because soon after, she would get exposed by Jada Kingdom, her friend, that she had slept with Quavo and Lil Meech while she was dating King Vaughn. So, clearly, Asian Doll is pretty crazy. But what is she doing today? Well, in January of 2024, she got into an argument with Jada Kingdom. Well, most recently, she got into a beef with Stunna Girl, a female rapper, after Asian had made a tweet. They ain't ever been offered a record deal or had a successful career ever since they put a female in that cage. But they ain't shit. since, and still ain't shit. Thunder Girl thought Asian Doll's tweet was about her, but it was actually about Cuban Doll, and responded to her. My career more successful than both b combined together and they was rapping before me, LMAO. Asian Doll then challenged her to an altercation for 100k. So it's pretty obvious Asian Doll is not a great person. But not all of rap's women were such an easy story to read. The final woman on this list is Britney Bird, who whether or not is actually a bad person is very controversial. However, if you watch this entire segment, I think you'll be able to make up your own mind. And to see where they are today, Britney was most famously known for dating Lil Uzi Vert and having most of his songs be about her. But to see where her and Lil Uzi, specifically Britney, went wrong, or if she went wrong, we have to go back to the beginning of the relationship. Lil Uzi Vert and Britney began dating in 2014, before Lil Uzi was even famous, remotely. But Britney wasn't your average girlfriend. She also acted as Lil Uzi's stylist, as she had had both the credentials, going to Parsons School of Design, and the experience working on projects for celebrities, such as Lindsay Lohan for the Met Gala, combined. And of course, Uzi loved her. He's my girlfriend, and she's crazy. What can you say about early, very early, Britney? <laughs> She plays basketball! <laughs> However, things weren't always sunshine and rainbows, because on the 25th of June in 2016, Lil Uzi would release a handful of tweets which read, We are done, change your life, over, now, it's over, done. Which fans took as him and Britney breaking up. And they were right, because Uzi then dropped a song titled, Soul Your Love. But you see, this wasn't your average Uzi song. Kidding, because we all know he loves to make music about women. It was supposedly about his breakup with his girlfriend, Britney. In it, there were lyrics like, Now she wanna go because I'm on a roll. Look at your face, boy, I know you're sad. You want her back, huh, you want her back. Can't get her back, yeah. Be done with you, like a fat. Basically, Uzi was broken up with, and he wanted Britney back bad. Plus, he was also kind of salty, so he's dissing her new man. Days afterward, he spoke about her to a concert in Philly. Yo, Britney, man, acting crazy, man. 
pretty bad for too crazy, man. Clearly, Uzi wasn't taking the breakup well. It was rumored that he or Britney had cheated. Their relationship actually reached its worst point when he dropped EXO to her life. By that point, she was supposedly out of the picture completely. The song was about Britney's lies and what she allegedly put Uzi through. Love is Rage 2 was mostly about Britney, and in it, he'd make multiple references to him and Britney's relationship. Addressing topics like betrayal, for example, in No Sleep, he raps, I think a lot of you, but I don't want to bother you every day to get right inside of you. Not talking Twitter, I follow you. In Life Goes On, he rapped, Just talk to your homie, she said we could be together, but I like that girl too much, I wish I never met her. Once again, clearly, Uzi missed her. Of course, these later became iconic lines. However, even after Love is Rage 2 and all of what went down between them, Uzi and Britney were actually on and off until 2019, and they even teased fans on social media. For example, in 2019, Britney posted Uzi on her Instagram, and Uzi also accidentally showed her one of his Instagram lives. In 2020, Uzi even bought her a dog with whom they named together, 16. In fact, at one point, they had gotten so close again that Uzi even put her on the cover art of the deluxe version of Eternal Take. But then, all of a sudden, in March of 2021, Britney posted screenshots of what seemed like Uzi messaging her, denying cheating on Britney with JT his new girlfriend, before it was announced. Here's what he said, and it's a lot. No budget because we living in the same house. Keep playing a dirty ass game. I didn't buy her shit. That shit ass. I put 300k together for you. You don't like me, never did. Shit a game to you. I remember convo like yesterday. If I'm with somebody, how come I tell you? Call me every day, I'm still by myself. You ain't waste shit. We still together. I don't talk to her, that's why she doing that. Didn't I tell you that before? Answer the phone like a kid. My grandma wants me to be with you forever, I do too. Answer. This pussy, how you never treat me like a man. Right after these text messages leaked, Uzi went public with his relationship with JT. Uzi then responded that he loved JT, his current girlfriend. I had a good Thanksgiving too. Christmas, New Year's. Why y'all thought that was still crazy tale self? You ain't seen him 10 hairstyles ago. I had to be real with myself. I love JT and y'all will too. But here's where things got feisty. JT and Uzi came out on a magazine and Britney tweeted a sock emoji and LMFAO. So JT then came to Uzi's defense, tweeting, All jokes aside, for someone who left someone, the obsession is real, move on, be happy, live your life. And, Hope would literally die to be in my shoes with the success I have, all dude and drip aside, I on your whole fake life. After that, Britney was pissed. So she took to Instagram to explain that she would never let a man use or take advantage of another woman, which is what she alleged Uzi was trying to do to her and his new girl, JT. Never give your whole life to a man. Never let a man use to attack another woman. Um, don't allow yourself to be abused, confused, misused enough to become an She then insinuated that Uzi was not treating JT right but I saw you get three-pieced like a person in a Mayweather fight and asking for a hotel room in a safe environment. And it just didn't make me feel good to see that. It made me feel sorry for the girl who think that abuse is okay. And in the past, I did the same to her. It just showed me that uh, any young girls that follow me to never be in a situation like that and it just showed me to never allow myself to be around an environment like that again. JT would clap back and kind of end it all, tweeting, I never saw a girl a day of my life. Trying to start a campaign to promote that shop. When was the bird museum liar? You really sitting here lying when you saw this? You would have been said this when you put those messages out. Took a day to come up with that video. Uzi then went on live and said he would never do something like that to JT. Try to justify a trying to expose me, a lady trying to expose me. Ma, I will never expose you. Listen. Ma, I will never expose you a day in your life. You know why? Because wow. that will hurt you. I already did it. As many followers as I got, I got millions. And you can check it up on Google. And that's a big ass fact. I would never expose you because you got to get yours. My bitch is rich. My new one. F you talking about? You got to go get yours. I never seen one yesterday. But JT also accused Britney of calling the paparazzi on herself when she was with her new boyfriend, St. John. By Uzi. Call paparazzi on yourself in a park wrangler. All right, for real. Don't sneak this no more. Go get some help. And you see, this was even worse because Uzi and St. John used to be friends. In fact, the year prior, the two rappers collaborated on St. John's song, High School Reunion Prom. Now, it was confirmed that he was dating the girl Uzi made all his songs about. And this is where everything went wrong. In July of 2021, Uzi pulled up in a Cadillac Escalade to St. John and Britney and pulled out a gun in a restaurant. Sounds crazy, right? Here's what happened. According to multiple sources, Britney was having a lunch meeting with St. John and a director named James Samuel at the Dialogue Cafe in West Hollywood near Sunset Boulevard around 12 p.m. of Friday of July 2nd when Uzi pulled up in a Cadillac SUV and confronted Britney. And first, he got into it with his former friend, St. John, where sources say Uzi threw a 
missed and fell down, causing his gun to fall onto the ground. Apparently, this is when Brittany got up from the table and went up to him. He then allegedly pushed the gun into her stomach and struck her. Afterwards, all three of them would flee the scene. Brittany would go to the hospital for her injuries and later on, she filed a police report. This even eventually confirmed the fact that Uzi had stalked her and been a wording her and been a b Unfortunately, for Brittany, fans still weren't on her side, so she tweeted, Don't y'all say protect black women? I'm a black woman. The result was Lil Uzi being charged by police with three felonies of a firearm, criminal threats, and domestic violence. In addition to a misdemeanor charge for carrying a loaded firearm a year later, in February of 2022, it was reported that Lil Uzi Vert struck a deal with the Los Angeles County's District Attorney's Office. Uzi had pleaded to no contest to one count of each felony assault of a firearm and a misdemeanor injury to a girlfriend and in doing so, he was sentenced to three years of probation, and he also had to undergo one year of mental health and substance abuse treatment, and 52 weeks of domestic violence counseling. Ever since then, Uzi and JT have been living happily ever after. At least, that's what the public sees. Was Brittany right? Only time will tell.